What's up, everybody? It's your main man, Spice Adams. I'm here just trying to put some paint where it ain't, man. The three-point conversion, man. Y'all already know what it is. Wet. <laughs> I don't even know how to put a name to some of the stuff that I've seen in Atlanta. Like, wow. Like, it, it is, it could be, you can, you can be cool on these two streets, and a block later, you would think that, oh, what yeah. just happened? Oh, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, Word. Like, That's because it's probably yeah. a different city. No, no. <laughs> yeah, you you no, have like, don't you? No. Two seconds later, you be in Decatur. It's, it's deeper. It's like the sun is shining right, right here. Right, yeah. And then it just stops. You're yeah. like, what happened? Yep. Oh, I, I'm not supposed to go to this. Okay, let me back up and stay yep. where the sun yep. stops. But you again, know, like they always say, Atlanta's not a real place. Atlanta's what, not a real place. What you mean Atlanta's not a real place? We're, we're, it's magical. It's like, you don't huh? believe that stuff happens. you like. You don't believe it happens. Only in Atlanta that can happen. Only in Atlanta that can happen. You you do realize y'all had an Olympic in, in Olympics in in Atlanta, no, and there was a shoot. Everything no, can we had a, we, no, it was a bomb. We had a bomb. We had a bomb. That was the year I moved to Atlanta yeah, in yeah. '96. That's no. what's on based out of Atlanta. Yeah, I remember that. No, Atlanta cool to me. Atlanta's a magical place. Atlanta cool to me. Atlanta has some great spots. It's Atlanta a cool great place to visit, get in, and get out. I don't even understand the Atlanta traffic. Like, wow. Oh, you you right. never understand we that. Get on that. Like, why do we have traffic? What's the you reason? you will oh. never understand. Oh, we hey, already going. We already going. We oh, have my fun. Bad. I'm so, sorry. okay. All right. <laughs> this is how you do it. This is how you do it. We just got just ease on in. When you, come this, on. When you know it's like family. It's like family the, affair. Hey, the, the only thing we missing is barbecue, some dominoes, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> some cards, a couple of beers. We have a party up. So let me start off the first question. Go ahead. Andre Gerard, offensive lineman. Yep. Play for the Cowboys, Chicago Bears. You can start really at the Cowboys, but keep going. Who, okay, I understand. Was it who else? Who else I'm missing? Which are, Raiders, no, Ravens. The Ravens. Then that's where I want to start with the Raiders. You the third, fourth person here today. Why does everybody? Y'all got to. It's something that they're giving y'all. Why does everybody end their career in Oakland? It's it's something to Man, play for that. It's something, something good, ain't it? Hey, it's got to be see something. What I say, fans. Oh, they got fans. Uh, the Oakland Raiders. Now, the Las Vegas Raiders is a right. new different breed uh, okay, of Raiders okay, fans. Okay. Okay. But the Oakland Raiders, have you ever been to the practice facility by the Oakland Raiders? No. Let me go ahead and say this to you right now. This is the airport in Oakland, mm -hmm. okay? This is the Raiders practice field. There's a tower in the practice field that overlooks the airport, which is right next door to the Raiders facility. Mm -hmm. That's number one. All right, mm -hmm. so you ain't got to go nowhere. When you drive down the street in Ventura, I believe that's where it is, they let you know, do not stop at the Walmart or Wingstop <laughs> after 6 p.m. Don't even go over there. I'm like, is it that bad? Yes, it's the, that bad. The yay area, baby. Uh, uh, what's the, the street, the, the, the Fruitville Station? Darren McFadden took me to a barbershop on Fruitville Avenue. Mm -hmm. Had no idea that I was on the street where this whole incident happened. <laughs> I, I am walking into the barbershop, and I'm like, where's the barbershop at? You just see a, a door with, like, wire and bars on it. Like, yeah, man, you got to get buzzed in. If I got to get buzzed into a barbershop, I don't need to be around here. That's crazy. That's that's Oakland. Yeah. Yeah. But love it. Hey, great place. Great great people. <laughs> great people. You, you're going to see every single thing that you can imagine in Oakland. <laughs> but uh, the organization... Um, Al Davis set uh, a tremendous foundation mm -hmm. for trying to really win. And so, I mean, they, they've tried. They've been close to really pulling it off, but it's a great place to play. But back to my, my guy's point, it's something totally different being a star. So there's only a couple ways you can be a star. And none of us doing movies. We don't play hockey. Last choice is the Cowboys. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't none of us doing movies. We don't play hockey, so therefore, eh? Cowboys. So, because this is what I try to get people. So, I get asked this all the time. And I try to, every time I get this answer, they're like, stop tripping. So, I have an expert here. What's up? What you got? So, Tony Romo gets bashed all the time. Yeah. And I'm always telling people, trust me, if he didn't quarterback the Dallas Cowboys, he wouldn't have that job. I always say that. Oh, wow. You, you say know, he wouldn't have the quarterback job? No, he wouldn't have the TV job that he has today. Oh, okay. He has right, that job right, yeah, because right, right. he was the Dallas Cowboy right. quarterback. Uh, he has he has that fame that's true. because he's the Dallas Cowboy. Okay. Dak, if that quarterback anywhere else in America, he wouldn't get the, the, no. the clap no, back he that he not. did. No, right. he would not. No, he Just would not. help the people out with that. Tell them about what it's like wearing a star mm. on the side of the helmet. 
the best way that I can explain the situation is, who's your favorite actor? Who's your favorite actor? Denzel. Okay. So how would you feel if you go out to training camp and Denzel's right there and he's a Cowboys fan? Oh, yeah. The man that you look at on TV that you that you never thought that you would ever see in life, mm -hmm. you're going out to training camp. He's like, hey, man, can you sign my shirt? What? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey, you Denzel. You Denzel. You don't ask nobody that. Like, no, nah, man, I'm a Cowboy fan. No, nah, it, it's it's something completely different. And I've I've had encounters with, personal encounter, I met uh, Allen Iverson, AI. First of all, saw AI. I, I couldn't even put words together. I'm like, oh, man, I, it's, 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 it's AI. Like, oh, right. okay. So I walk up to the man, get enough courage to walk up to him. Hey, man, you don't know me. My name is, know you. You play for my team. Your name is Andre Droy. You went to the University of Colorado. Da -da -da -da. Whoa. Wow. So it's something different because yeah. you get all this attention. I just got through telling some guys, if the Dallas Cowboys were in the Super Bowl, can you imagine <sighs> the media? You, there is <laughs> nothing you could do to imagine how much attention mm -hmm. you will receive. Right. I flew from Dallas to Las Vegas, saw Michael Irvin, great guy. Talk to Mike every time I see him, I have a conversation. Great personable guy. Mike is getting swarmed in the airport. Still, because he won a Super Bowl in Dallas. So, I'm just saying. Like you when the, when the Cowboys win, oh, you just oh, so you, get mad. So, what does it mean to be part of an alumni when you think about the um, history and, I guess, heritage of the offensive line or offensive line member from a Dallas Cowboys all the way from the 90s? Because just that, that history is so rich. So, and, it, and it just kept going. I will tell you guys a personal story that I've never really revealed on the radio. So, uh, personal story, to answer your question, it's a lot. It's big shoes to fill. Mm. So, um, I played with Larry. I'm going to let you know mm. Mm. that Larry Allen benched 700 pounds, Ooh. and Larry Allen can hit you with 700 pounds of pressure. Like, this is, this is a real fact. So, it's my rookie year. I'm not quite sure who Larry is. Like, I heard some things, but I don't know. I didn't hear. Okay. He been 700 when I was in college. I'm like, whatever, dude. Like, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> right. And you're young. Right, right. Yeah, you know, you feel yourself. So, tell you the, the whole story. Mm -hmm. Larry comes in a team meeting late. Not right at, right not when the meeting started. We're talking about 10 minutes after the meeting started. Meeting in. Okay, yeah, meeting started. <laughs> and Jerry is talking. Right. I'm a rookie. He's like, man, you don't need to be late to this. <laughs> Larry walks through the door. Jerry stops talking. Just got quiet. He watched Larry walk through the door, walk up the stairs, sit down. Larry, you good? Yeah. As I was saying, I'm like, yo! <laughs> yo! This is not going to happen around here. What? Wow. Who is this dude? So I'm a, again, I'm a rookie, man. That's yeah. L.A. And as we would be, if we see somebody walk in with that type of respect, I'm coming at your neck. I want that respect. Right. Had no idea <laughs> that Larry Allen had decided to test me. So I'm going to tell you what happened. We got out to practice. They said, hey, Rooks, hold the bag. I'm, I'm holding the bag. Whatever. Cool. Larry punches the bag. The bag folds in half. Hits me in the face. I bite my lip. Uh, I'm hot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, hot. I'm going like, to get this old joke everything that he won't. I right. can't believe. I'm hot. Now, the rule is, if you're a veteran player, you don't hold the bags. Mm -hmm. So Larry, out of the blue, decides to hold the bag when I go. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. <laughs> Boy, that was the worst mistake I ever made in my life. <laughs> yeah, it's a long day. <laughs> so punch the first bag, punch the second bag. I see Larry. Uh -huh. I take off running full speed and just hit him with everything I got. Yeah. He does not move. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and he starts laughing. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what you laughing about? <laughs> Just hit this man with everything I got. I got to do it again. So I talked to the older guys later, and they said, hey, uh, you know you messed up right. Like, what did I do? I did I did the drill the way I was supposed to. Yeah, you came out full speed and hit Larry with everything you got. Yeah, he liked that. What you mean? You need to now realize that you have to do that every day for at least eight weeks of the season. Oh. I don't care. I'm a rookie. Bet. Let's do it. Again, 
I made a wrong situation. I've already dipped. dipped. I'm, like, I'm in the deep end. I got to just go ahead and keep going now. Yeah. It's week eight of the regular season. We're still doing the drills. This is pregame now. And I'm looking at Larry like, hey, man, please, dude, at this point, <laughs> <laughs> something's got to stop. <laughs> I can't keep going like this. Like, I feel like my life is getting short. He was like, no, nah, we got two more weeks of this. I'm like, oh, oh man. <laughs> But to, to back to your story, to feel those shoes, it means a lot because there are guys that have walked that path and they stand out, even if they're not in the Hall of Fame, that have made such an impact to the game of football and they were the best at their, their position. Mm -hmm. Think about this. Just take this into account. The Cowboys were in the Super Bowls. Their backup offensive line was a gentleman named Ron Stone. Ron Stone played in the league for 14 years and went to six Pro Bowls. Mm. This dude could not break the starting line up for the Dallas Cowboys. Mm. That's how much, that's how deep the line was, and that's how much pride that they instilled in what they do. So it's a real mm. big deal. I want to talk about the Colorado Buffaloes for a second because uh -oh. it's year two of Coach Prime. Yeah, yeah. I deem year one as a success because I'm like, hey, they won one game the year before. Okay. They won one game the year before. So, I mean, he okay. went from one win to five wins. Okay. What are you expecting in year two under Coach Prime? Well, I firstly would say that I went to the University of Colorado, and we won a championship there. So yeah, No doubt so, about you know, it. Yeah, no so, doubt yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah. You can bring that back. But I think that um, he had a lot of turnover in the roster. Right. So I think Nick, this year he'll probably win six to seven games, which will definitely be real, real big for – the team because they won four, I believe. He may win nine going into the Big 12, but it's a very, very competitive conference. And so I'm looking for him to improve on what he did going back into the Big 12, but I'm also looking for him to realize that you've shown up and they didn't expect a lot from you in year one. Right. Now you've increased the target on everybody's back no. in year two. Oh. So now you got to walk into it knowing that they already know you're coming and then they want to do something to embarrass you. Mm. Did, did you have a problem? with the, all the hoopla. I, I'm not going to lie, I didn't because the whole point was getting everybody to all eyes on Colorado, even mm -hmm. though it got it had enemies coming. But still, not just that, but just the way he coached as far as you had the, um, what was the freshman that came in? He didn't get to play. But then I kept saying, I think it was cornerback. Oh, 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 oh uh, yeah. Yeah, but he didn't Number get to play. Number one, Mc McClain. Because Dion was like, he wasn't doing what he's supposed to do as far as watching the tape, watching film. He wasn't ready. So Dion didn't play. He had the old school. A lot of people questioned that. What did you think about that? Or how do you feel about that? I think, I think there has to be there, – there is – the game has changed so much, especially with the young players and things like that, but there still has to be a touch of the old school way of you have to earn, go and earn. Right, right. And so many guys are coming out of high school – and they're the man, but some of the fundamentals that you should have learned in high school, the coach didn't take time to teach you that. Right. And so you're, running, you're walking into a situation thinking that it's going to be the same, not realizing that you're playing against some older guys that, and the game is a little bit faster and it is a little bit tougher. So, you know, setting a standard up that he did to say, hey, you know what, these are the rules, these are the guidelines. If you do this, you can play. If you don't, you can't play. I respect that. I think – most coach, I think more coaches should do things like that because, again, it teaches people that there's going to be adversity that you're going to have to deal with. Period. How can you respond to this adversity that's being, being given to you? What are you going to do? Are you going to fold or are you going to fight back and say, no, nah, I'm going to make the corrections and now I'm going to play? So, good yeah. deal. Now, let's talk about our, our guy, Jerry Jones. So, so much is made about his post-game pressers. The camera is always rolling in this – in his booth, uh, just wherever he goes. Yeah. Tell us something about Jerry that we don't know. Jerry, in his heart of hearts, all he wants to do is win. He can't he's, – he's got certain things together, but he absolutely, in his heart of hearts, all he really wants to do is win. Now, has he created a, a symbol, created a team, created a, a, a brand – that has truly saturated and, and covered every single market. <laughs> he has. Right. He has. Now, that part, Jerry, we can't do anything about. There needs to be some guidelines because, again, there's a lot of distractions that these guys have to deal with that no one else does. So, in to part of you saying 
what it feels like to be a star to have that star in your helmet. I don't know if other players could deal with you're at practice and they're taking tours of your building. Not one day. Right. Every day. Every day you walk in and you do something, you know there's going to be a tour that comes through this building. And so there has to be better things done to block things out so that they, the players can focus on things of that nature. But Jerry just wants to win. And I can't. I couldn't tell you anything – Anything else about him on camera? Can't do it on camera. Right, yeah, right, no doubt, no doubt. No, right, 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 right. But uh, now nah, Jerry just wants to win. No. But ask anything you want. You were there with Parcells, right? Yeah, yeah. It was it was, it was a tough four years of my life. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, who, like, you don't understand. I was like, I love Bill, but that felt like a prison sentence. You don't understand. <laughs> I, did, I I did my time. With, and the thing is, if you talk to any player that's ever had Bill as head coach, they all say the same. I yeah. did my time. Greg Ellis is on here talking he about did, that. He said he did it. Um, you don't understand. Greg, it's a funny story. Bill was so hard on me one day that I literally was walking off the field like, you know what, the hell with this. <laughs> <laughs> and Greg was like, Greg, let me talk to him. Like, nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take this dude no more, man. It don't have to be this hard. Life should not be oh. this hard. Have you? True story. So, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of players. This man is coaching the team. Bill Parcells is the head coach. We're about to start practice and training camp. Like, we're training camp about getting, hit, getting ready to get out of our beds, go to practice. We see guys walking the opposite way with suitcases. Bill has not made any cuts yet. They quit. Like, I, we, oh. I saw players quit. Like, I'm not doing this no more and walk off. Like, quit. Wow. Like, Bill's, Bill's whole thing was, if you can make it through a Bill Parcells camp, you can make any team in the NFL. But in them 14 days yeah. of straight two-a-day practices, you, you're you going to have to dig real deep. Because I will tell you, we had a practice, and this is before the new CBA, and I don't know if y'all have ever heard of this. We got to the last period of practice, and Bill blew the whistle and said, start it over. Like, dang. We from period speak. one, he said, "We, I, I'm thinking we got to start the, uh, you know, start the this, drill. this, yeah, start yeah. the drill over." He said, "No, no, whole practice, not from period one, from stretch. Oh, go no. back to stretch, get retaped, do this whole entire practice over." We were like, "Wow, NFL practice." Yeah. Do you know how? Do you know how it feels to be a young dude to watch grown men cry? <laughs> <laughs> like it was a bad movie that nobody could get out of. You just sitting there like, man, come on, Bill. Why are you doing this to uh. <laughs> every day? And Bill's whole thing was, and it, it, it's crazy, but it made sense. If I can get these guys unified that they all dislike me, mm -hmm. then all of them being unified, they have one thing that they're pointing to, not to their team. Mm. It's funny you say that. One, So Quincy Carter is one of my good friends. No Q. Q talks about this all the time, and he's like, listen, nothing is tougher than a Bill Parcells oh, no. Bill Parcells training camp. No. He hear people complain about stuff like, dude, mm. you've never been to Bill Parcells training camp. He, he says that mm. all the time. The man threw a cup of water at me during a break. He <laughs> blew the whistle twice. That means you can walk. I'm drinking water, and I laugh. He balled up his cup of water, threw it at me. He said, that's what I'm talking about. You're too damn distractible. It's water break, dude. <laughs> man, come on, man. Like, let us make it, please. Like, but that's how Bill. It, it, it's not until you go through the process and you cross the line and you become the person that you're supposed to be. Right. In Bill's eyes, that he leaves you alone. Like, it, it's rough until you get to that point. And I mean, it's rough. I always wanted to know because uh, – have you ever gotten a stare? Because I remember, even with Phil oh. Sims, Phil Sims come off the make, and he, Bill just stare. <laughs> oh. Give him a stare. Oh. And just, it is. <laughs> have y'all ever seen it on camera, on, like tape or anything? Yeah. It, yeah. Is, it is the most intense and fearful that you will be <laughs> in that moment that it happened. Because it happened to me. So I'm walking off the field, and I try to get smart. Bill's down here. I try to walk all the way down here. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, you know what? Let me get some distance from him. Surely he'll lose me, and as I'm walking, as the everybody walking I see field. him. Right. I see him looking at me. Right. But I'm gonna go down here, then I'm gonna circle back <laughs> and sit on the bench. So I went, did that whole routine, and I'm sitting on the bench, and Jason Witten walks by. I said, "Hey, man, this is during a game. There's sixty some thousand people at the game." <laughs>
I said, hey, man, is he still looking at me? Yeah, I'm still looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Shit. Man, come on, baby. <laughs> like, you, you don't want to look. You can't look up. You, right. you got to keep looking down. <laughs> You'll look up a little bit. Dang, he's still staring at me. There was a guy that got tackled right by me. He did not break eye contact <laughs> right. I was like, yeah, man. I, I don't oh, know about this one right here, man. This, this is going to be bad. I don't, oh, yeah, man. So, yeah, the stare is for real. Wow. So the I can, is real. I mean, that's crazy. I can only imagine, like, the stuff no. you would say to Quincy or, or Romo. Oh, yeah. oh I, I can only imagine. I'll even give you a better one. Jason went and broke his jaw, right? Got mm-hmm. hit and broke his jaw. Bill showed up at the hospital. What? He had surgery. The question wasn't what wasn't, are you okay? How do you feel? The question was, are you going to be able to play Sunday or do I need to find somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, like, Bill. Those are the questions. Bill with no joke. We're going to test Big you tuna. mentally. He, Damn, he's going Bill. To, he's going to mentally push you to the edge. Like, right. We went full speed with no pads. So what we got? Feel full speed. Bill said we were going to go full speed or walk. We'll never walk. So you know my answer. Mm. So even if you take the pads off, guess what? It's full speed. That's Dude, Bill. Once he, once he left, were you all – Happy or was it like, man, we could have had something special because of the way he coached? And per- cut- I would say personally, I was actually hurt when he left. I was hurt mm. because I had gone through so much to get to a certain point. Right. So day- you, had, you had become his guy. Yeah. So you had I, become I, his I, guy. I, like, I remember I that. Fall through. Yeah. So he's announcing that he's leaving. I go to the facility to have a conversation with him. Like, what are you doing? Man, Andre, I just can't. Man, hell, you took me through hell. <laughs> no, we need one year. And for you guys, another story that most people don't know, when Romo dropped the snap from, for the field goal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in Seattle. I remember that. Here, here's an here's a internet-breaking thing right now. You're about to get something. It was not Romo's fault. Nobody knows it. There are only two other people that know this, and he don't even know it. It wasn't his fault. This is what happened. We're driving down the field, and everybody knows we have a kicking ball to kick field goals with. Uh, LP, Louis Philippe. Lasour, he was a snapper. I'm, sta- I'm, st- I'm right next to him on field goal. And the ball's placed on the ground. I'm like, LP, that's not our ball. He said, Dre, yeah, you're right. That's not our ball. It was a brand new ball that looked like a brand new shiny pin. I was going to say the glaze. And I said, yeah. we looked at the referee and said, hey, man, this isn't our ball. He said, so what? Snap it. Uh, like, man, this isn't our ball. Look at, and look so at, look at I, I, you never knew that. <laughs> and so <laughs> we're arguing with the referee, and I'm trying to figure out hey, LP, can you snap this ball and can I jump offside so they kick it so we can get another ball? But I didn't realize how much time we had and if we had a timeout. But we're looking at the ball saying, that is not our ball. And the referee said, you better snap it. Oh. Brand new shiny ball. And I want to say a, a year later, they came in with the rule that now you can use the kicking balls. Because I heard something about that, that it's it, an they had the fact. wrong ball. or we're, we're arguing with the referee oh. saying, that is not our ball. Right. And the fact, here's another one that'll make you, that'll, that'll make you, that'll frustrate you. We drove down the length of the field. Yeah. To kick a field goal with four offensive linemen, not five. What? Marco Rivera had uh, had slipped a disc in his back. Uh-huh. He could barely get in the stand. So we were changing plays. He was on the field, but he couldn't block anybody. He had no power. Mm. So we're going down the field and we're changing the play. Just like, hey man, just stay on the field so we can get down the field. Mm. Barely get in the stands. Got all the way down the field. Getting ready to kick the ball, they put it. They put it. Brand new, brand new ball in front of us, and we're arguing with the referee saying this is not our ball. Cause that football, I pro- I said it when they were showing it. That, f- that yeah, that yeah. F- that football looked like they prepped it at uh, Krispy Kreme. Yeah, I'm talking. I promise was, you, I saw. I'm like, why it does it look so slippery? If you go back and look at the ball, you'll see. Like, wait a minute. Cause and man, we're arguing with the referee. Like, man, this is not our ball. He's just like, snap it, Mace. I, I promise you, I was taking up for Romo. I was like, yo, that wasn't his fault. That ball was mad slippery. And man, I remember. Nobody that. really even knows that. Look, that look was crazy. Man. Nobody <laughs> even knows. And so the, but the next year. Uh, Bill leaves and we get Wade, and it was so different because you know Wade is a laid back. I love Wade. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we had mini camp, and so we're out there, and he Wade's trying to get us to go through practice at a certain pace. So we're used to. Look at that ball. Shiny. It's massive. Look Put at it that camera. ball. Show it. It's massive. I remember it. I Look at that ball. It's a brand new ball. It's a true story. Listen, Andre. I pro- I remember. I remember it. I was like, yo, that ball is mad shiny. I, I got robbed. It. it was a brand new ball. No, and I'm telling. I saw. So, it. so I gotta add this to, cause Dez caught it. 
in now this ball. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the situation. Which the situation with Dez, I was sitting at the house when Romo decided to change the play and go to the pass. Mm -hmm. So, and it's funny because it took me it took me back to a memory with Bill, and Bill always had this thing when we were driving down the field, and Bill would say, "Hey." As we get down the field, this is we ain't got no timeouts. Da da da. This is how much time you got. I need you to get down the field and kick a, kick, a, kick a field goal. Well, I look at Romo when we used to do it in practice. Like, the hell with that. Let's go get a touchdown. Right. And then Bill used to tell us, hey, the reason why I said kick a field goal is because we can take all the time off the clock, kick a field goal, and win. Mm -hmm. So, it's fourth and one. All you gotta do is get a first down. He throws the ball to Dez. Dez catches it. At that point. We don't really need a touchdown, but Dez, is, Dez wants to score right. Right, as well as he should. So when the ball came away and he grabbed the ball again, at that very moment, I'm sitting at my house watching it like, he's about to get them with the with the rule that they did in Chicago. He's going to get them with the Megatron rule. Yeah, I said yeah. he's just about, he's about to do that right now. And everybody kept saying, no, he's not. I said Megatron did the same thing, caught the ball, yeah. went to the ground, Went to push up off the ground. The ball came out of his hand. They said incomplete. Did not he's survive about, the ground. He said, I said, he's about to do that with us. And it was a smart play. But, again, all we needed at that time just, was just so first he caught first down. You're talking about the one against the, yeah. um, Detroit, right? No, I'm talking not about the one against Green Bay. Green Bay, yeah. my bad. But if he, 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 lunged, if he, yeah, yeah. If he catches it and just, and just go down. Secure. Uh, take the time off the clock. I never looked at it like that. Goal, win. I never looked at it like that. You don't, have, you don't need the touchdown. Right. So just play smart football. Look get the first down, <laughs> take the time off the clock, field goal, win. All right, I, I have to ask you this. So we were just talking about Cutler and everybody's attitude, and people said Cutler was cocky. People was what, – what, you you was there that one year. How, Man, my experience <laughs> with Jay Cutler was completely different, and I, I, I feel bad for even telling this story. I, I remember that. I met Jay Cutler, and – I got there to the team, made, you know, got on the team, moving around, hanging out with the offensive linemen. They're like, yeah, Jay really doesn't talk to us. I'm like, why? Like, what's going on with Jay? He's just, you know, kind of standoffish like you were talking right. about. Not cocky, right. So I'm sitting in the locker room, and the linemen, just during a break, they go and do something, but they went in the locker room or whatever, and I'm just sitting there by myself. Out of the blue, walks over, hey, man, my name is Jay Cullen. What? <laughs> like, oh man, so he's like, hey man, you know what? I know you just got here. If you need any help learning the playbook, da 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 da. Here's my phone number. You can come oh my by my God, house. Bam, it. bam, bam. I'm like, oh, he don't like y'all. We me and him cool, right? He just don't uh, like right, y'all. Right. That's what the problem is. But see, and I was, we were talking about that, and you know, especially following him. Of course, I'm a Bears fan. Cut was just that type. Just he was just who he was. The yeah. media didn't like him, and they painted that perception of him like like they did Barry Bonds. I keep saying that, and I just felt like Jay. Yeah, Jay's not gonna do a whole lot of media. Yeah. Jay's not gonna be in they front didn't of like cameras. Him. He just wants to throw the ball and go. He play just want to let it rip. He just want to let it rip. And if you and if you could put him in a situation where he can make smart decisions and he can let it rip, you probably have a different situation. Did y'all think y'all that? Well, I say we. You think we were going to the uh, to the chip in 2012 when we started out seven and one? No. You didn't think so? No. Why? Tell me why. <laughs> you, you want me to answer this question? Yeah, yeah, answer. Get him. Get him. I, I, I'm going to say it to you because I because this is what I'm <laughs> right. about to say Get is going to hurt. Get him. I didn't think they were going to the chip because there's one team that they could never beat, the mm. discount double check. Yeah, and he that. owns the why, record. Why you yeah. he, I, I'm telling you, it. I, <laughs> I was in Chicago. Watching hey, the guys it. prepare. That's cut. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going, Drake. Keep going. Keep and going, Drake. Green Bay week, he was like, whoo, why is it so tense in there? <laughs> <laughs> like, why are y'all so upset? And then I have to, oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, man. It's been a while since y'all, okay. Bro, I got can't, you. Uh, hey, I can't stand playing it. Playing against Green Bay. It happened. Look, Green Bay done got us a couple times. It happens. Y'all got more, but that's okay. But we understand. Like, I, yeah, I don't know. It, yeah, well, yeah, what is, what is the like issue? Like, I don't know. Why can't y'all – what is the problem with Green Bay? Like, right now, my friend back home, I always talk to him. He was the Bears fan. I'm like, man, it's the NFC two teams. It's not like the NFC North. It's the NFC two teams. <laughs> 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 it's two teams in the NFC North. Detroit, Green Bay. That's it. You might get Minnesota. They show up every once in a while. That's it. I don't know what's going on with the Bears. I want the Bears to come back 
and take dominance like they did in 1985. Yeah, I don't know. And the crazy thing is, we beat Detroit. Artists. We'll beat them once. We'll beat Minnesota. But who you, who, well, who you not beat? Yeah. It's so bad. I'm going to yeah. just be honest, y'all. Y'all should know this. It's so bad. Our Super Bowl is whatever game, whatever playoff game Green Bay is in. That's our Super Bowl. So if they win, okay, forget it. Okay, the next game is our Super Bowl. Right. They lose, oh, we don't pop a champagne. I'm sleeping good that night. It's, it's smiling it's in my when sleep. I play Green Bay. I don't know what Bruh, goes I hate is. Green Bay. <laughs> I feel bad. And shout right. out. And I'm just saying, shout out to the, uh, I think it was a veteran I, at this. I'll say this to you. When y'all play Green Bay, this this is going to piss them off. It's like you driving past Gary, Indiana, when you see that cloud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the, ain't no sun over here. Like, damn. That's, that's how it feels. No sun. Like, no sun, like, bro. It's it's like no, no happiness by group. Nah, it's just like man. we. Can, it's like we know. It's just something about it. No matter what. I don't know. It's just you yeah. Know it's all right, man. Home. Look, it. I, look, for I can I can I can relate. I can relate to a point. When I was in college, <laughs> we went eleven years. Would I ever beat Nebraska? We got close a couple of times, but we finally beat them. At some point, you got to stand up and fight. It we seems gotta, yeah. like. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's mental. Yeah. It's to the point. It's <laughs> mental for both. Green Bay lots. We gonna like beat if them. You saw, if you saw a Green Bay fan, would you like want to fight or would you fall out? Like which one would you do? That's what I'm saying. So he, just, was, he just look, he just booed. He just booed. He just booed a guy who was and they won the Super Bowl tickets. But and he booed. He had a Green Bay Packers fan. I'm, like, he booed. It, it hurts you to your yeah. core. Oh, I hate the Packers. I made my <laughs> nephew. My nephew came over. I was so mad at his mother. He came over. This little. This, this see, Joker see, he, came he, with a, a Packers jersey. You got to take that off, dog. I made him take that it off. Serious? I gave him no. a shirt and put Yeah, he had to take that he off. Can't yeah. wear, he can't support it. Ooh. He wants not to be a house. It's not his fault that he wants to align not himself up with a champion. You can't get mad about hey, that. Another one, real quick. <laughs> Shout out to my guy, Aaron, Bears fan. I was mad at him. Yeah, I'm saying I was mad at him because the last game we played the Packers. Yeah. And so he wanted to, you know, he met his Packers fan. He's like, I might invite him to my house. I blamed the loss on him. Like, dog, why you do that? Why you bring him to your house? <laughs> uh, I blamed it like, on him. But let's let, let's just take a look yeah, at that. Let, let's 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 take a look at that. You blame the victory of a team yep. on somebody who wasn't even on the field. Yep. What happened? That's how we What's do. What's going on? That's how we do. I blamed it it's, on him. Not look. They, they went from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers not to, this. to Jordan. Like this is and they like the train ain't stopping. Yeah, just. <laughs> It's like it's like y'all how y'all the no, offense no no no, no, no. no in a good way no no, no listen no. I'm saying the way y'all offensive linemen just keep getting y'all just keep getting great linemen that's how it is with the Packers their quarterbacks just keep it's it just they on a little roll like, they I, on a roll like I, three how you get three look. in a row <laughs> I'm talking about three in a row back to back, back, to back. back. Yeah. Yeah. organizations yeah, organization take decades yeah. to that's why I say Dallas how y'all keep at this point they're doing Drake numbers they back to back back to back to back like they just but. Shout out to my man Olin. Yeah, Cruz. Man. My man Olin, love Olin. Respect. I, I would ask Olin, Truly. man, That's what the guy. hell Cruz. goes on when y'all play Green Bay? It's like, what do you say? I don't know. I mean, I, I would ask him that because oh, oh. it's like the whole game plan, just like scrap <sighs> it. It ain't working. Cruz, my guy. All right, man, we got to talk about the water. We got to talk about the water. Man. Yeah. I mean, talk about how, something. How? What's going on with the hydration, man? How? The future of hydration. Man, uh, how is the uh, uh, highly oxygenated water um, based out of Houston? It's in spec stores right now. We're trying to get it out in front of everybody. Uh, Jeffrey Sims is a part of it. Tyree Phillips is a part of it. And uh, we got a couple of athletes, other athletes that are trying to get a part of it. But what we're trying to do is um, bring a healthier water to the people. So you've mm. heard about water in plastic bottles, bam, 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 not even realizing that all those waters have microplastics in them. So we are finding this out years and years and decades after right. we've done it. So this is a water that actually they figured out how to actually add extra oxygen into the water. It takes actually pretty fluffy and um, it's good for you. So uh, we're trying to get it out there. We've got some people that are interested in it and I'll make sure I send you a case. I'll send you a case just because you're a Bears fan. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you a case and, you know, we can we can go there. I was about to say, we, we need to send one to the Bears. Maybe that'll help them win. It's Green Bay. But, no, I will say this. The team, the facility where the high water is currently, uh, the Texans use it. We saw what they did this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, they won. They went, to the, they went to the playoffs with a rookie quarterback. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Y'all had, wait a minute, let me go back to something. Oh, Lord. Why did I open up? How did y'all draft 
and I love Mitch. How did y'all draft Mitch Trubisky? You bring it all the okay. And who was the quarterback in that draft today? Deshaun draft? Watson, Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes, Deshaun. Who else was in that? It was, it was well, that was on them. No, no, he went them for those two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you could have got Mahomes. That's and why you that, got Mitch. That's Trubisky. why that GM is gone. I don't know. And then trade it up to get him. Think about it. If you, you could have done what the what the Green Bay had done, had you just gotten Patrick Mahomes, you would be in a different position. Who knows? Yeah. You could be in the Super Bowl right you, now. You know what? We could have, but at the same. What, well, we don't know at that time, time. We don't know if there would be Green Bay, but you right. still would have been in. You, been in the playoffs. <laughs> you definitely would have been in the playoffs. <laughs> right. Definitely would have been in the playoffs. All right, man. We go. We gonna leave see this. why? Why see? Uh, we gonna just, the transfer of energy, man. We no, we're, this, we're having a great conversation. I asked you before we started, how deep do you want to go in the rabbit hole? Did we not? Did we not say that? We asked you said we want to go deep. So therefore, we're, we're now we're getting to the deep level. Like we went. Know, we went Steph Curry. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go. Hey. Half court, let's go. Shoot the shot. First it was on him, but he and I just transferred all the way over here. No, nah, it's like he's he smiling a, and laughing now. Look, it's now a I'm even distribution of <laughs> right, right. asking questions, you know. But see, cowboys stick together. Yeah, yeah we do. Cowboys we stick do. together. We do. You, you've I mean, seen I mean, it all day. That's been the theme mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. America's team. You know what? And, and, and hey, I know, hey, and I hey, know, hey. I know. Hey. See, hey, is he hating on the American team? Yes, he's hating on the American team. Look, Jesus. Oh, okay, let's look. We'll look at it like this. Let's go. Take any regular season game, judge the amount of viewers, who has the most viewers. Dallas Cowboys, there you go. That's number one. All year. Hey. It never matter. It doesn't matter. Take take any any logo in the NFL across the entire country, the world, most recognizable, most recognizable franchise, Dallas Cowboys. I mean, yeah, hey, you know, in America, we're trying to be the best at everything we do, so might as well get behind the Cowboys. That's just something totally different. That's just my. And you know, I don't, I'm not mad at Cowboys. Like, I'm cool with I'm the. I'm that fan that don't understand why people hate the Cowboys so much. Like, oh, I, it's, it's, I don't it's get understandable. That. Uh, the hate is real. I understand. Yeah, I know. It's the hate is super like, real. It. We, like, got some, we got some obnoxious hate, fans. Yeah, like, yeah like, for real. Like, they. I mean, mugs be getting. <laughs> yes, they lost. They be acting like we do when Green Bay lose. It's like, bro, you were. It don't make sense because you should have seen. You a Jacksonville Jaguars fan? What you, you know getting happy for? It, what Josh should do as just as fun, if you want to see something crazy, let the Cowboys play the Saints in Dallas, and just wait until after the game and watch how many fights happen. It's the craziest thing ever. The Saints? Oh yeah, they hate everybody. I'm telling you, Cowboys fans fight everybody. Just wait. Oh, it used wow. to be. It used to be worse at Tech Stadium. Tech Stadium. Yeah. We knew there was gonna be like in the third quarter if you were in the far end behind the goalpost. There's about a 90 something percent chance that there's going to be a fight during no. the game. So mm-hmm. you're used to that. But yeah, Cowboys fans can be obnoxious. So I can imagine winning the Super Bowl. I'm telling you, oh first of all, this whole thing would have been packed. The whole entire Cowboys roster would have been out here. Jerry would have had every Cowboy that made multiple Pro Bowls and here uh, yep. make their appearance on radio. Everybody's yeah. going to be here. You got to. I yeah. tell people this all the time, and they'll tell you if, every time the Cowboys lose. I'm getting seven to eight hundred tags. Oh yeah, they love it. People, I'm like people who don't even know. Be like, dude, who is this Maceo dude, man? And why does everybody hate him when the Cowboys lose? Hey, much respect to me. I gotta say this on, on air. Much respect to Maceo. I'm one of those, as you can tell, the passionate fans where I'm breaking TVs or yelling at the coach like he can hear me. I'm just so you must be in a deficit after the Green Bay game. I, of, of course, I can't watch. Look, I can't watch. <laughs> Hold Ooh, on. You say you break TVs. How? Back back in the day, I can watch Sports Center until Thursday after we lose. Like whoever, we, that just I'm just that type of fan. Packers, uh, I mean the Cowboys, getting the brakes beat out of them in the playoffs. At halftime, they down by what 25 something. It was like that. 20, 27 to three or this something joker, like that. This joker, this joker on Facebook Live talking. Yeah, man. So it's and what I what I comment what I comment. Yeah, bruh, it could be me. How in the world are Yo. you doing? I know my t- I, I, I know my team. I can't do it. I can't do it. But much respect. I'm like, yo, that is dope. I can't. But I've said it all year. I know this team. I can look and tell when we're gonna play good, when we're gonna struggle. I'm like, it's one of them days. Now I will say to his point, there are times as a player, you looked out on that field, you seen a, a couple of series go by, like, man, it's gonna be a long one. Yeah, just just say that. <laughs> Ooh, man. I, to your point, I remember playing Brad Favre a few times. We played him when he was in Green Bay, like, oh, yeah, he ain't doing too much, you know. 
Yeah, we got him beat. He went to Minnesota. I'm like, man, that is the legendary Brett Favre. I, how did this dude throw a ball from the other hash and yeah. drop over this right. dude's shoulder in his hands? Right. Right. He turned right. it back to cover this. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, right. why would you wait till now to play that game? You could have did that years ago. You want to wait till now in the playoffs and then want to embarrass us and then right. get to the Saints and lose. So, like, come on. All right, man, we got to let them go, man. Uh, See, I would have been here longer. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, 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 that's what we do. Because it's conversation. We're having conversation. We're not asking the same question about this. We ain't talking about the Super Bowl. Who who you picking in the Super Bowl? I don't care about that. I'm telling you, the only thing we're missing is some, you know, some some Like I said, Domino. Domino. Spades. I'm out. You know? Yeah. Maybe an adult beverage, if you like. If you choose, right, I right. say nothing. Then, yeah. <laughs> then we turn this whole party into right, right, right a party. Right, right, for you make the other book. Yeah, yeah. Right. Ah, put it right there. Ah. <laughs> and you, you got to throw it down with so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> All right, Sometimes man. if you flip it, it'll go across the table. Right. <laughs> Give me my book. Hey, yeah. Had that person who, who's not playing walk around like, that just we need. <laughs> 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 That's the whole game up. That also does no, happen to But you know when they do that, they man, 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 look. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you got to mix me and you got to do it again. Yep, yep. All right, man. man we appreciate you, job, man. man. No doubt, man. Yes, sir. This is Jamal Lewis, Super Bowl champion, Baltimore Ravens, running back, uh, University of Tennessee, national champion, born and raised, Atlanta, Georgia. You're listening to the three-point conversion.